the NFL exclusive license. How did we get here? How come Madden is the only NFL game that's allowed? Is EA actually going to be losing their exclusive license very soon? And what does the future look like for NFL gaming? We're going to cover all of that in today's video and we're going to uncover a lot of the truth about this story that many people don't know. The information is out there, but a lot of people are very misinformed on the topic. So today, what I'm going to try to do is inform you. There's been people that have come forward over the years that have worked for various game studios and even people from inside the NFL that have put this information out there and it is available if you do the digging and look for it. So we're going to talk about how we got here. We're going to talk about some things that you might like and some things you might not want to hear. So I would suggest that you kind of check your emotion and your fandom at the door and just be opening to hearing the actual facts and what the future looks like. Now let's get started. People often blame EA Sports for the reason that we only have one game. The truth is, the NFL and even 2K is more to blame for this. But when I say that, you're immediately thinking that I'm full of you know what. Because the narrative for well over a decade has been that EA was scared, they were insecure, they saw a real threat and thus they ran to the NFL and told them that they would pay whatever it takes to secure the exclusive license. So let's start there, what did 2K actually do wrong? And why did the NFL want to go to only one game? There's actually two reasons as to why, but we'll save the second one for a little bit later. First, let's talk about what 2K did that angered the NFL. They released NFL 2K5 for just $20. Why did they do this though? Was it to compete with Madden knowing that if they offered the brand new game $30 cheaper, that it would undoubtedly make headlines and draw a lot of attention? Did they know that the end might actually be near and this was going to be their big going out party? Let's talk about the price tag first. Inside the NFL, there was major concern in terms of the quality in the eyes of the consumer when it came to the pricing of Madden 05 versus NFL 2K5. Their belief was that you couldn't have a realistic competition in the market with that much of a gap in the price. The NFL considers itself a global luxury brand. They didn't want their name attached to a product that was being sold at a bargain bin price. The NFL took offense to their brand and licensing being watered down by 2K when they offered the game at such a cheap price. And then EA had to lower their prices as well as a reaction to that. The price made 2K5 the people's champion. Madden still moved more copies of the game and was considered to be just as good by most people, but 2K5 was able to make it a real competition by their power move to lower the price, but that's ultimately what blew everything up in terms of the NFL. Now there's another reason as to why one NFL game happened, and 2K perhaps saw the writing on the wall early on, and that's why they decided to do what they did with 2K5. Many believe that. NFL started moving towards licensing only a single partner per product, Soft drinks, snacks, credit cards, you name it, they only have one partner. They started to do this for everything. The NFL doesn't partner with Pepsi and Coke, they partner with just Pepsi. For payment services, they only partner with Visa. For pizza, it's Papa John's. You get the picture. So why wouldn't they only have one video game? Not to mention, the NFL are control freaks, and it's much easier to control one game than multiple. Perhaps Sega saw this coming and wasn't willing to pay the massive amount that it would cost, so they went out with a bang and released their game for $20. They obviously didn't see the benefit in purchasing the exclusive license, otherwise they would have done it. They were coming off their strongest year and they would have undoubtedly taken off as the only NFL option, but even in those circumstances they didn't see the benefit in paying as much as the NFL wanted. And Sony is probably the only other company that could have competed with EA's pockets, but even they didn't have any interest. You can argue that at the time, purchasing the exclusive license was a bad business decision for EA. For the amount that it cost, and then on top of how much it costs to develop the game itself, they didn't make enough money off of copies sold alone to make up for that. And EA has had to adjust how much they pay for the license many times because of this, sometimes on a year-to-year -year basis. It's just too expensive on top of everything else. Why do you think microtransactions are such a big thing, especially in sports games now? Because they cost too much to put out. But we'll get back to that point a little bit later on in the video. So Sega sold off their sports division to Take Two, who then retaliated and they signed a semi-exclusive deal with Major League Baseball where only they were allowed to produce a multi-platform MLB game. 
this took away EA's beloved MVP baseball after 05, which that version is considered to this day to be one of the best baseball games ever, much like NFL 2K5 is viewed to be the best football game ever. The kicker here though is that Sony was still able to make MLB The Show because it wasn't a multi-platform game, it was only on PlayStation. And they eventually blew 2K out of the water to the point where they stopped making the game. The show actually took a lot of what MVP Baseball did and they continued to improve upon it. So we lost on both ends here. We lost a you know great football game, we lost football competition that was producing two great options, and we lost a good baseball game that was multi-platform because 2K was never able to live up to what MVP Baseball did and they eventually had to close up shop. Now that brings me to my next point. Would we have been in a better position if 2K was the only NFL game? The truth is we'll never know because it didn't happen. But they didn't do well being the only baseball game. They haven't done a great job as being the only WWE game either. But they've done an amazing job with their NBA game outside of becoming pretty greedy. But hey, that's just kind of the reality we live in now with gaming. 2K, like many companies, always performed best when they had competition. And even if you don't consider NBA Live to have been much of a threat, they are still competition. They were still a pretty decent game during 2K's early rise, which then eventually led to the glory days of 2K11, and they've since come back to at least be a decent second option if you ever get too fed up with NBA 2K. You still have somewhere else to go if you want to play an NBA game. Is 2K the better game? Absolutely. But they're also the more expensive game. Let's say you only play my career, but you get fed up with how much you have to pay to boost your player. You can go to NBA Live and boost your player rather easily, without having to pay a dime. Sure, the gameplay isn't as smooth, but at least you can get the experience you want without having to pay, so maybe you decide to do that. And that is what keeps 2K having to compete, and they've in fact even taken some things from NBA Live over the past few years. Even though Live is not the better game, they still have good ideas that they have implemented, thus 2K has done the same. So even though Live is far behind 2K, their existence alone still helps make NBA 2K better. So why hasn't 2K come back to make an NFL game? Why hasn't any company? Will we ever have competition again? Will we see a boycott eventually? I'm going to answer all of these questions right now. If other companies wanted to get involved, the truth is they've had chances. The exclusive license isn't forever, it comes up for renewal. And the thing people don't realize too is it's not even about the deal being exclusive anymore. The cost of entry is simply just too high. Years back when Rex Dixon worked at EA, he called out 2K at E3. He basically said to 2K, go invest in the license and let's go at it. He got in trouble for that because he was not supposed to say that. The truth is 2K can get involved if they want to, but they don't because it's too damn expensive. These other companies aren't stepping up because of the massive investment that it takes to get started. If these companies didn't see the benefit in paying for the license to continue producing their product that was already selling back then, it's almost unimaginable that they would be ready to pay just as much if not more to get back in the door right now with no game ready to go. They have to start completely over. The cost of entry is far too high for any company to even take a shot. You have to pay this massive amount for all of the licensing and then you have to bring in an entire dev team. You have to build an engine, build a framework, and this is all before you even start making the actual game. It would take an incredible amount of time and money. Rex Dixon just said this in his interview. He said it would be a monumental undertaking and that very few companies have the capital to even consider it. People think just because 2K5 and All Pro Football 2K8 were good games that oh it would just be easy. People even say look at 2K8 that gameplay is already ahead of Madden so it wouldn't be that hard for them. But that's irrelevant to the conversation of right now though of starting a new game. What they did in the past does not make their job easier right now. It doesn't make it any cheaper either. On the Sim Standard podcast the other day they revealed that they spoke with Ramon Russell who works for MLB The Show and they asked him why doesn't Sony get involved because we know Sony has the money but even he said it costs way too much and if it costs too much for Sony that says something. So now this brings us to competition in sports gaming altogether. The truth is it doesn't exist in the way that it once did and it likely never will. The landscape has changed and I don't think a lot of people have noticed this. 
Exclusivity is not the issue anymore, which is what most people want to believe. It's the cost. Many people on the inside have said, the license isn't even truly exclusive anymore. There are many good articles on this that you can read up on that all basically say the same thing. The licenses are just too expensive, exclusive or not, for there to be competition these days. It's too much of a gamble. This is why we've seen, you know, so many sports games devolve into only having one producer. The game won't sell without a license, and even with the license, you need to sell enough so that online play is viable these days. And with a game that's as established as Madden in the online world, it's going to be hard to pull consumers away. They know they have a guaranteed online situation with Madden that's good in terms of content and player base, it's hard to get those guys to jump ship even if the other game is better. It's the same reason NBA Live will always struggle to compete with 2K now. NBA Live has all the same cool online stuff and even some different things than 2K. And even, let's say one day it happened to become better than 2K somehow, but the player base is still on 2K, and everybody and their friends are playing in the park on 2K, not live, so why would they go to live? This is why 2K ended their MLB series. There's not enough demand for the game to offset the cost, especially when you're not the number one game. 2K pulled out of hockey on console a while back too for the same reason. It's simply not profitable enough to outweigh the cost, and they're not the number one game. Look at NBA versus li or NBA 2K versus Live. While there is competition, Live isn't exactly profitable. But with a company as big as EA, they can afford to operate Live at a loss while trying to get back into the market. They believe that because of the NBA market share being so big that they can eventually get enough of it to make the game worth it. And they have the money to wait it out. But they also had a game to keep building off of even if it was bad. They didn't have to start completely over. And even with that said, they still had to take multiple years off from producing the game over the last decade. And even though Live is much better now than it was when it hit rock bottom, 2K still dominates the basketball market and will continue to do so. It wouldn't be surprising to see the NBA Live series go away for good eventually if they can't take back a big enough chunk of the market. When it comes to NFL, MLB, and NHL, those markets are just so much smaller that there's no room for a second option to be profitable anymore because the licensing combined with how much it costs to make games on next gen, it's too much. And it's only going to get more expensive. Soccer has a large market, so you see a second option able to work with Pro Evolution Soccer competing with FIFA, but even that gap is beginning to grow. FIFA far and away outsells Pro Evolution, and we may eventually see a day where they don't exist anymore either. So ask yourself this question, with all that we've covered, why would you want to get involved with making another NFL game, especially if you're 2K? You're in a great position right now, you dominate NBA gaming, you're the only WWE game in town, and you're making money hand over fist in microtransactions. Why would you want to invest an ungodly amount of money and years into a game that you might never see a return on? You might say, well they could just fill those games with microtransactions the way they did with their other games. But the thing is, those other games already existed. You're forgetting that you have to start over, and also that the market size for the NFL isn't that big. Why would you spend that much money just to get started when you're still going to have to compete with the juggernaut that is Madden? Now many of you believe if 2K came back, well that would be the death of Madden. I've even seen a lot of people say this about NCAA. If they could just make NCAA games again, nobody would buy Madden. Even though when NCAA was around, people still bought the crap out of Madden. The need for an NFL game will always be there. People say that if NFL 2K comes back, they would do to Madden what NBA 2K did to live. And this is simply untrue and they know that which is why they haven't gotten involved. Madden is EA's flagship title. NBA Live was always lower on the totem pole. When NBA 2K was gaining traction and getting better, Live didn't do anything to really compete, probably because at that point EA didn't think they could fail. Madden, on the other hand, is a cash cow for EA. If you think that they wouldn't work harder if another company came into the playing field, you're out of your mind. If NFL 2K were to somehow come back, all that would do is light a fire under EA to double down on Madden, making it undoubtedly better, which is why most reasonable people want 2K to come back. We want the competition so that we get a better Madden, and also we get a better second option that we can play if we choose to that could potentially be even better than Madden. 
but Madden itself is a staple in sports gaming, and whether you like it or not, it's not going anywhere. Because while there's many people that say they would run to 2K over Madden if they came back, that's still a minority of the gamers, and people don't like to hear that. There might be 100,000 people that strongly feel this way. Heck, I'll even go as far as to say 500,000. But there's still millions of millions of gamers who are as casual as they come and will buy Madden robotically every single year. These are not smart consumers. Heck, most consumers in general aren't smart. A lot of these people don't even think that there's anything wrong with Madden because they don't know better. They just want the latest copy of the NFL game to play with their friends. These are the same people who play the game for two months and then move on to something else until next year. Madden is all most of these people know. And as much as we can tell them that there's a better product, they'd still buy Madden anyway. Just look at Apple as an example. Yes, they have great products, but a lot of people know that you overpay for their name. And other companies at time put out objectively better products at a cheaper cost. But do fans of Apple want to hear that? No, they don't care. They just want Apple. The marketing muscle behind Apple is that strong. And the same goes for EA. They are a marketing machine and because of that Madden won't go anywhere. So you can't expect 2K or any other company to be the heroes we want and fork over that kind of investment just to be a player in a small market. It's not a financially smart decision, especially for 2K who owns the markets that they are currently in. They're in a great spot with basketball and wrestling. They're happy. Sony is happy with MLB. EA is happy with Madden and FIFA. That's just the reality. You don't see EA running out to bring MVP Baseball back, which would easily sell seeing that there's no baseball game on Xbox, but the cost is probably too high for them to invest in a small market game, especially when they know that MLB The Show would own the PS4 side. Well, what about the XFL then? All 2K has to do is make an XFL game with a good editor. That won't cost as much to make, and we leave Madden for that. I see this set all the time. I hate to break it to you, but the XFL is going to have a hard enough time existing, let alone having a video game. Non-NFL or NCAA games simply do not sell. If all Pro Football 2K8 didn't sell enough with actual former players, to the point where 2K didn't even try to release a second installment, don't expect them to make an XFL game. People say it all the time, man, if 2K was smart, they would jump on development for an XFL game. Some people even said this about the AAF, and that league lasted all of two months. 2K is smart. That's why they're in the position they're in right now. Jumping on an XFL game wouldn't be smart because the demand's not there. We don't even know if the XFL is going to be successful. Everybody on forums you visit might want it. The YouTube comments section might say they want it. But the mass market audience is not going to want it. And if the mass market audience doesn't want it, there's no money to be made. People say it's all about the gameplay. If the gameplay is good, people will buy. Then why didn't people support 2K8? That was the chance to make noise, but it didn't sell well because the diehards are a small group. The mass market only cares about having the licensed product. If you want to blame EA for anything, blame them for putting out a subpar product. Blame them for resting on their laurels. For watering down the game. For not innovating enough. Blame them for refusing to fix the gameplay. But they're not the only reason we have one game. We were going to end up here one way or another, no matter who won the war. Whether the NFL wanted it this way, or we eventually got here because the cost was just too high for two options. It still would have happened. And as much as NBA 2K is a deeper and more immersive experience than Madden, they still have a lot of the same flaws as Madden and their hardcore community complains just as much as we do. Their gameplay has suffered, became a lot glitchier and cheesier. They have metas that are just as annoying online as Madden's, like the fact that if you make the correct build, you can literally drain contested shots all day long with no consequences. They're even worse than Madden with microtransactions if you can believe that, and anybody who has played 2K would attest to this. So if 2K won the war, that doesn't mean that the situation would be a whole lot better. I do believe we'd have a much deeper game in terms of franchise and career modes and stuff like that, but we'd still have a lot to complain about, and we'd still have a need for competition. So now that we know that Madden is likely the only NFL game we're going to have, how does it get better? This is where another popular opinion is brought up every year. Boycott the game. Many people believe that if we boycott the game, the NFL would take their license elsewhere or maybe open it up or it would force EA to make changes. Here's where I'm going to tell you something else that you're not going to want to hear, but the boycott is never going to happen for the same reason I spoke about a few minutes ago. 
the casual mass market audience is not going to stop buying Madden. They don't have a problem with Madden. Sports gamers in general, the casual sports gamers, don't realize what's wrong with these sports games. They're just happy to play the sports game. They're not the smartest of consumers on average. It's just true. It serves their needs. They aren't smart enough to realize that the games aren't where they're supposed to be by now, or maybe a lot of them simply don't care for the things that us hardcore players want. They're happy to pick up the latest copy and just play. Many people have stopped buying Madden over the years and the sales remain the same. Again, going back to something else that I said a few minutes ago, EA's marketing muscle is strong enough to bring in enough new people every year to offset the people who get fed up and don't buy. I'll bring up Rex's interview once again. He said that's all EA cares about, is the mass marketing and attracting new people. So no matter how many hardcore players get fed up, it'll never be enough. People have been talking about boycotting for years and years, and Madden still manages to sell the same and even more some years. And boycotting would honestly be the worst thing in terms of hoping another company got involved. You have to remove your emotion from the situation and understand that if a boycott were to happen to the point where sales were low enough to be a problem, that would only scare other companies away. If they didn't want to jump in and try to compete or take over when the sales were up, they definitely aren't going to invest into it when the sales are down. In order for Madden sales to get that low, it would mean that the interest in NFL gaming wasn't there anymore. Not that people were just tired of Madden. When the casual audience goes away, that means they don't want an NFL game, not that they just don't want to play Madden. These companies aren't stupid. They know that in order for Madden sales to struggle, it means the market would be dying and they're not going to invest into a dying market. If an effective boycott could somehow happen by the grace of God, it would be nothing short of a miracle. And what you would run the risk of in that situation is actually having no game at all for the future. And it would probably take a few years for EA to consider throwing in the towel, but at that point no other company is going to step in on a market that would clearly be dying. So if somehow this miracle did get pulled off, we'd honestly run the risk of being without NFL gaming period, and that's really not the answer we want, we just want a better game. So how do we force EA's hand? I don't know if there's a correct answer to that. I would say, try not pre-ordering the game maybe, see where that takes you. That's a way to meet in the middle, because people are still going to buy the game regardless, but you don't have to pre-order it. Our best hope is that one day Sony or 2K just decides to take that leap once again because they want to. I would love for both of them to come back in and see what they can do and make football gaming great again and have that competition, but it just doesn't look like that's in the cards anytime soon. That's going to be it for today. Kind of a long video. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Definitely leave your feedback below. Check out these other videos, and as always, I will see you guys next time.